ever. You could write the greatest song, have the best players play it, immaculate recording, everything's great, and if nobody hears it, it doesn't matter. What's up, Indians Immortals? I'm here in Nashville, Tennessee at Summer NAM, and yeah, being in a crowd again is pretty weird. COVID has changed a lot about how we communicate, how we connect, and especially how we make music. And I got an opportunity to sit down with a bunch of my friends and talk about just that. Trey Xavier. Hi, Ty. Internet, celebrity, sex symbol, gear, gear god, sex symbol of gear. Is that right? Yeah, I make gear sexy. Yeah, look at this, look at this package. All right. <laughs> What's one thing that you've learned during COVID? The um, main thing was that so much of what we do as creators and as musicians especially um, can very, very effectively be done remotely. And collaboration is great, but everyone being in the same room to collaborate is actually for me, I never really like that if there's too many people, it gets too chaotic trying to get something done, especially if I'm hanging out with the homies and having a good time. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's actually a little bit more productive in a lot of ways to collaborate remotely. So I had a couple opportunities to collaborate remotely. One that was probably one of the biggest deals for me personally that I've ever done, and it came together so quickly and easily. And that was a cover of Kill the King by Rainbow, which was sung by Hansi Kirsch. Oh, I love so much. God, that was it was the just, coolest thing in the world. It was just like a big personal W for me, you know what I mean? So that wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for the, if it wasn't for COVID at all. So that, you know, just want, looking on the bright side for that, but just goes to show you that you can absolutely do just about anything remotely that you can do in person. What kind of good things did you see, you know, either bands or maybe content creators doing with the time during COVID that maybe they can keep moving forward with? I think my favorite thing was just seeing people get, whether they wanted the time or not, they got the time to sit down with instruments and they got to try things that they hadn't otherwise had time to learn how to do. And just really like hone in on their craft and reevaluate where they are in life, like with music and their job and everything. And so getting to see my friends be like, you know what? No, I actually, I want to do this and I don't want to go back to this job. I want to try something else. Um, I think that was the coolest thing that I saw happen to COVID. Not even like obviously all the streaming and all of the content and everybody trying to come together to figure out how to make music continue. Despite all of this, that was phenomenal too, but just the like little wins. So one thing that I thought was so cool in terms of music, the, just the world of music and art was this idea of the virtual live concert because it's this kind of cool in between space between like a music video and a live show. Um, Behemoth put one out that was outrageous, like s such a show and such crazy sets and everything. And it's the kind of thing where, you know, you go to a live show and they can have a lot of those kinds of elements, but you can go way, way bigger with this sort of thing because you only have to do it once. Whereas if you try and take the whole kit and caboodle on tour, it's really expensive, it's extremely difficult. In their case, it would probably be very hazardous with all of the fire. <laughs> You're but, looking at like a Rammstein situation. Yeah. Like, where you're gonna need a whole like team of teams. A team of teams all dedicated around the fire situation. <laughs> but, you know, and they look amazing, multi-cam, like super high production. And even though we can now go back to having real concerts, I think that the virtual live thing will continue because it's almost like the like how a music video is like this particular kind of art form mm -hmm. and then then there's this new it's it's a, not completely new but now a, a much more socially acceptable like or a thing that people expect that'll happen and I think even bands will use them as like promo maybe for their actual live show like put out a virtual live concert and then like oh we're coming to your city on this day come see us live i think that's killer i think uh, a lot of bands did a really great job even one even bands that did like just real basic ones like 
you know, in their practice space or whatever, that's still amazing to watch. The, just the fact that we can do that now. Mm -hmm. Like if, if this had happened 20 years ago, that w would be completely impossible. I think the biggest takeaway for me and maybe other people that I know is just like all there's so many new opportunities on the table. A bunch of new jobs have been created because of the whole COVID thing. A bunch of remote work has been created. Um, but yes, I think, you know, there's a lot of opportunities that weren't there prior to COVID. And I think they're worth looking into. If you're a musician, you're like trying to make a living doing your music. That's like it's awesome. I did it for a long time. It, I made almost no money, um, but I had fun. And then when I got offered the a, like a job at a corporate building, you know, with not the degree qualifications that I think you might otherwise need. Um, I think now we're in an age where you can start using your internet presence almost as a resume to some degree. So I think that's worth considering and being careful about, obviously. Mm -hmm. And I also think that it's worth looking into how you can use that to like segue into maybe a corporate job or something with more stable income. Um, and I'm not saying that that's the goal. A lot of people, the goal is to make music for a living, not do a living so that you can make music. Mm -hmm. um, but having been on both sides of the coin, uh, the, lad, the, the one that I'm in now is less stressful in a very different way. What are some like missteps that you saw either bands or content creators you know, do during COVID? I do know a lot of people were vocalizing polarizing opinions at the beginning of everything and that i if i had to say that you know and i mean i i can be controversial at times <laughs> so like i get it you know you want to speak your mind and you should be able to um but there's always consequences in doing that unfortunately and i did see a lot of that in a lot of bands i mean like wasn't the whole like trapped debacle oh yeah wasn't that this year when they were like you yeah, have masks or are communism Nazis and you know like whoa, whoa. Oh, trapped. I think it's a thing where some people have opposite reactions to the same stimuli the same input right mm -hmm. some people are like oh my god I can't go anywhere and do anything some people kind of shut down and some people are like oh I got all this free time I'm gonna blah, 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 go crazy like I spent I probably worked a lot harder just on making content and doing gear God stuff um, some people yeah kind of shut down or took the time to relax and like, or whatever, you What's know, that? hang what? out with people within their pod families and whatever, but, or just got depressed and didn't do anything, which is a hundred percent understandable. Totally. Okay. Like, you know, um, hopefully they, you know, made it through and everything's going to get better for them now. Um, but I think it it makes sense to me if nothing else. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So going forward, now that we're kind of coming out of quarantine and things are sort of kind of returning back to some semblance of, you know, the before times, what advice would you give to either, you know, bands or maybe content creators um, now that we have these, now, now that we're familiar with these new types of tools going forward uh, in order to make the most of, you know, the, the after COVID times? If you're going to do a, a virtual concert now, um, you that you might want to wait until it's more it's still it's exciting again because at first it was everybody was doing them because that was all that could be done now people will be willing to wait for uh the real thing then maybe a little while after that it'll mm -hmm. um it'll be exciting again i don't know because we weren't able to go out and tour which is the kind of the traditional method of bringing your art to the masses right bands were uh, forced to rely solely on content, okay? And I've heard a lot of people, a lot of musicians, be like, ugh, I hate this idea of content, I wanna make art, you know, I just, and anyone who had that attitude too strongly didn't really get anything out during the pandemic, and if it were to just continue like this, they would probably just kind of fall off the map, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But what I hope people would have taken away is that content is, it isn't the same as art. Content is the packaging that you use to advertise your art, okay? The art is the music, the song, whatever. The content is what you build around it. The, it's the pill that the capsule that the medicine is in, you know, that you can, so you can swallow that. The art 
is, uh, is what you're trying to get in front of their face. Now, the quality of your art is very important, but as everyone knows, if you don't get it in front of somebody's face, or in this case their ears, it doesn't matter. You could write the greatest song, have the best players play it, immaculate recording, everything's great, and if nobody hears it, it doesn't matter. It's the tree falling in the woods. So that's why you need content, and content can be a music video, or an interview like we're doing right now, or, or an Instagram post, or whatever. But it's, to me, it's the fun part. Like, making music and making the art is the, is the good, uh, fulfilling part. And then the fun part is the content. So um, don't be afraid of content, even though it's kind of a cringy word and concept, and you think of, like, like Instagram influencers who are really douchey and, like, like, oh, this sparkling water just happens to be in this... You know, um, or whatever. <laughs> I don't know why sparkling BR, water. BRB is sparkling water content yeah. selfie. I drink a lot of sparkling water, and yeah. so that's I'm trying to take a shot at myself. Trey, but anyway, what kind of sparkling water do you like the best? Well, it's polar seltzer, <laughs> polar raspberry seltzer. lime. My favorite it's too. It's delicious and cheap. Don't be afraid of content. Um, have fun making it and put it out consistently, and your art will grow as a result and um i don't know the attitude towards content i think has changed significantly because people saw that it it kind of is everything these days you know mm -hmm. um if you can go out and tour great and that's very important but you can get a lot more done um by making really good content that sticks that people will come back to time and time again and it's working for you while you're sleeping you know you go out on tour you you uh, people come and see you and they live in the moment and it's amazing to watch people play live and there's a connection between the audience and the performer but then it's it kind of like wears off and then it's a memory you know mm -hmm. a piece of content a video whatever they can always come back to so in a lot of ways it's worth you know, 10, 15 shows mm -hmm. of making a video. Like, how many people will come see you play? 100, 200? How many people will watch a video? 15,000? Like, it's not as good in a lot of ways, but it's always there and it's always working for you. Companies, you know how, like, they're, they're paying YouTubers to advertise products. Now they're also paying streamers to do stuff, too. Mm. So the whole, like like way to make a living doing this is, is getting easier and getting more broad. That sounds awesome. I want to do that. How do I do that? How do they do it? Um, well, honestly, the biggest determining factor that I have found in people that I know that have succeeded and the people that I know that are still trying to get to a certain point is just like, how long are you willing to commit to grinding <laughs> on something? And that really is what it's always been, even like pre-COVID. Everybody that's like, oh, I want to do YouTube, I want to do Twitch. I'm like, are you down to stream like three times a week? Are you down to make two videos a week? Because you need to do that for like a set. I mean, usually two years is what I tell people is like content all the time, endlessly for two years. And you will inevitably carve out a niche for yourself. Like it is impossible not to if you are making a thing consistently, like all the time for years on end. So that's that's still, in my opinion, the best route because everybody's like, oh, the, the market is so oversaturated. It, it has been. It has been for a really long time. And if you want to cut through all of that, you just have to have the stamina <laughs> to keep going. And I have never had that stamina. So like, I think the only reason it ever even happened for me is because I started like 2008. Mm -hmm. But if you can just sit down and grind content on all platforms, like that's still the best method, in my opinion. Trey from Gear Gods, tell them where they can get the gear godage. W-W-H-T-T-P. <laughs> okay, no, write this down. GearGods.net. Gear Gods on YouTube, Gear Gods Net on Instagram, and I don't know. Does anybody use Twitter? I don't think I even use Twitter. I don't really know. When are you, but when it's are you there. Gear Gods got dot gov. I mean, that's the dot gov. Well, I think we have to become a government agency. Okay. Um, I think that would we'd have to be Gear Cops. Gear. <laughs> do you do you want people to find you anywhere? <laughs> do you want to just be a mystery? What do you, you know? Um, I I feel like if. 
you know. Go to sarahlongfield.gov. Make sure to, you know, get that. Yeah. <laughs> you can Google me or not. Go Either way. Googler. Like, I have a job don't. now, so we're fine. <laughs> What did the light just fade it, it a did. lot? It just did. at the very. <laughs>